During the late Triassic, dinosaurs were not yet the dominant group of reptiles. Still, fossils of the Saruscian dinosaurs, which include the theropods and sauropodomorphs, are still reasonably well documented. This makes the rarity of fossils of the other major branch, Ornithischia, all the more perplexing. This group is famous for such clades as the Ankylosaurs, Hadrosaurids, Stegosaurs, and Ceratopsians. The species from the late Triassic and early Jurassic were mostly small, bipedal herbivores or omnivores. While Ornithischian fossils from the early Jurassic are less common than either branch of Ceruscium, those known from the late Triassic were extremely rare and poorly preserved by the late 20th century, with the best example at the time being the South American Pisanosaurus. However, even Pisanosaurus was fragmentary, and its identity as a true Ornithischian debated. In 1989, things seemed to begin to change. Fossil teeth of a new species of reptile were found by the paleontologist Adrian Hunt. Named Revoltosaurus, meaning Revolutionary Lizard, its teeth were remarkably similar to those of Ornithischians. From this, Hunt concluded that the presence of Ornithischians in a paleo environment could be ascertained from teeth alone. Not only this, but he claimed that their teeth differed enough between species to be diagnostic enough to name new species from. In the following 15 years, more species of Triassic Ornithischian dinosaur would be named from teeth. These included Galatonia, Tychoveosaurus, Lucianosaurus, and Pekinsaurus. Altogether, these fossils seem to show that Ornithischia was common and widespread during the late Triassic, with fossils from what is now Europe, Africa, and North and South America. While the known diversity of Triassic Ornithischians seemed to have increased, future discoveries would show that this was the result of misclassification. In 2003, a new species of Triassic reptile, Silosaurus, was found. While Dinosauromorph, the group that includes dinosaurs and their closest relatives, Silosaurus was not itself a true dinosaur. However, its teeth were very similar to those of Ornithischians, enough that it would have been easy to mistake Silosaurus for one if it was only known from teeth. The full implications of this would only begin to be realized next year with an even more startling discovery. In 2004, a large assemblage of Revoltosaurus fossils were found. Instead of just teeth or mere fragments, these contained several nearly complete skeletons. However, it was quickly apparent that these skeletons were not those of an Ornithischian or even a dinosaur. In the words of William Parker, the paleontologist who found these Revoltosaurus skeletons, the convergent evolution of the teeth is what makes them look like herbivorous dinosaurs. That's the only thing similar in the entire skeleton. There are no other dinosaur characters in the entire animal. Instead of characters that would tie it to Dinosauria, Revoltosaurus possess features that are identifying traits of Pseudosuchia, the group of archosaur reptiles more closely related to crocodilians than to dinosaurs. The fact that there are now several groups of animals with Ornithischian-like teeth left the identity of most Triassic Ornithischians in doubt. Soon, Galatonia and Pechnosaurus were recognized as species of Revoltosaurus. Another supposed Ornithischian, Technosaurus, was soon recognized as a Silosaurid, part of the group that includes Silosaurus. While Tecoveosaurus and Lucianosaurus haven't been formally assigned to another group, they can no longer be confidently assigned to Ornithischia either. In light of this, William Parker said, We have pretty much erased the record of Triassic Ornithischian dinosaurs from North America, Europe, and worldwide, except in South America. Even the fossils in South America aren't very well preserved, and people argue whether they're dinosaurian as well. These remains refer to Pisanosaurus and an unnamed Heterodontosaurid. The unnamed species was later found to be rather fragmentary and to have possibly been from the early Jurassic instead of the Triassic. At around the same time, another species of Triassic Ornithischium was found, the South African Eocursor. However, it was soon determined that Eocursor was also from the early Jurassic. As for Pisanosaurus, even its status as an Ornithischian is now considered doubtful, with it lacking any traits unique to dinosaurs but possessing several sea and silosaurids. As of now, there are no longer any ambiguous Triassic Ornithischian fossils. This is particularly odd since Ornithischians were thought to be the first group of dinosaurs to split off, with Saruscians splitting off from each other afterwards. As good Triassic fossils are known from both theropods and sauropodomorphs, this leaves a large ghost lineage for Ornithischia, spanning at least the entire late Triassic. Three hypotheses have been proposed to explain this. Some paleontologists still think that Ornithischians were present during the Triassic, they are just rare, and likely geographically limited. Other paleontologists have proposed a more radical hypothesis, that Silosaurids, like Silosaurus, were in fact the early members of Ornithischia. This hypothesis would require a few dinosaur features previously thought to have been inherited from the common ancestor of the group to instead be the result of convergence, rewriting dinosaur evolution. If true, then the Ornithischian ghost lineage would be almost entirely filled, and the record in the Triassic would become closer to that of the other two branches. This might also explain why Ornithischians were uncommon during the early Jurassic. 
While Sarisci and dinosaurs lost a little of their diversity after the end Triassic mass extinction, Silosaurids are unknown after this event. If Silosaurids are in fact the early Ornithischians, this implies they lost most of their diversity during the end Triassic mass extinction. Afterwards, compared to sauropods and theropods, they would have made up a much smaller amount of the surviving species, explaining their initial rarity during the early Jurassic. Another idea has been proposed by paleontologist Matthew Barron, that Ornithischians evolved later than once thought. Instead of theropods and sauropodomorphs being each other's closest relatives, he proposed that theropods were instead more closely related to Ornithischians, as part of a clade called Ornithischalida. Under this hypothesis, it would instead be the sauropodomorphs that split off first. Several different positions were suggested for exactly where Ornithischia would fit, many of which would place their evolution much later in the Triassic than usually thought, or even during the early stages of the early Jurassic, meaning there would not have been any Triassic Ornithischians at all. This would mean that many, perhaps all in the more extreme placements, of the dinosaurs classified as Triassic theropods, such as Coelophysis, were instead basal Ornithischalidans, neither theropods nor Ornithischians themselves. This hypothesis would explain why Ornithischians were rare during the early Jurassic, as they had only just evolved. Of course, the Ornithischalida hypothesis is not yet fully accepted, and only time will tell if it proves accurate. Regardless of which of these three hypotheses is correct, it's clear that Ornithischian evolution and biodiversity is very different from what was envisioned in the late 20th century. Whether this simply means that Ornithischians were rare, or a complete rearrangement of the dinosaur family tree, it seems safe to say that a time traveler in the late Triassic would be unlikely to encounter many animals like this running around. Whether they would encounter any at all will only be determined with more research and newly discovered fossils. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. If you are interested in learning more about one of the species mentioned in this video, Reef Weltosaurus, be sure to check out my video on it. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.